we're going to explore the next piece of the puzzle for our application problems, which will be finding the max and min values of an objective function. Now normally we would need to graph our feasible region and figure out our vertices, but here we're given the vertices. We're going to plug those into our objective function. We'll also need to figure out our objective function later on as well, so we're basically we're going to be putting everything together into one type of problem here in a couple videos. So for this one, we have four vertices, and what we want to do is we want to plug those in to our objective function, so this guy right here, plug it into our objective function, and find out what's our largest value, what's our, what's our smallest value. So for the point negative 2, 0, if we plug that in, plug in negative 2 for x, and 0 for y, we end up with negative 4 minus 0, which gives us negative 4. For our next one, let's do 3, 3. We'll plug in negative, or sorry, 3 for, two, for x and 3 for y. Well, we have 6 minus 12, so we get negative 6. Let's try another one. Let's see here, we'll have 6, 2. You know, my height. I'm a basketball player these days. We'll have 2 times 6 minus 4 times 2. So I have 12 minus 8, which is positive 4. And lastly, we have 5, 1. I plug in 5, I have 2 times 5 minus 4 times 1. So I have 10 minus 4, which is 6. So it looks like we'll have this here is our maximum. So given the feasible region, find the maximum and minimum values for each objective function. So our answer will be 6 for our max and negative 6 for our min. And it's just a coincidence that one of them is 6 and one's negative 6. It's not always going to be that way. You could have 5 and negative 2 or 5 and 3 or whatever. But this one just happens to be negative 6 for our min and positive 6 for our max. Now you do the same exact thing for number 3 right here. You plug in for y, you plug in for x, find out what your largest value is and what your smallest value is, and that will be your maximum values.